You know, if you love art, if you're an artist, if, well, you know, you need someone to help you decorate the reception for your wedding, like I did, at some point in San Francisco, you've probably wandered in Flax Art and Design, celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. And today in studio, we have the brother and sister team that run it, Howard and Leslie Flax. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, David. That's quite an anniversary, 75 years of being, what, what was it? I know that you joked about the, the catchphrase, but the, the candy store for the creative, Flax right. Art right. Design. That's right, yeah, that was coined that, by a customer. Yeah. 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 Now, what is the history of Flax? How did it get here 75 years ago? Whose idea was it? I don't know if it was an idea so much uh -huh. as a, um, uh, a move that was designed to, to support the family. Mm -hmm. uh, our grandfather, Herman, began the business in a, a small downtown store. Uh, actually, initially, they lived in, in the back room. But it was, uh, the idea for the business was spawned by Herman's brother, Sam, who had an art supply business in San Francisco. Right. And he was able to make a living of it through the Depression, whereas his three brothers in the construction trades were not. Yeah, well, now, you've been getting a lot of attention this year. I mean, uh, some people have come on board to congratulate you. I have a little surprise for you. I understand yeah. that State Senator Mark Leno, San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee, San Francisco Board of Supervisors, led by Scott Weiner, have given you congratulatory messages. And I have something here for you, a little surprise from the offices of United States Senator Dianne Feinstein, an wow. official senatorial proclamation congratulating you on 75 years that's of serving the creative that's community. That's, that's pretty nice. It's yeah. not every day you get a, a congratulatory no. note from a United States Senator. And yeah. she's been in the store many times. I've helped her. She's, she paints seagulls. S Senator Feinstein has uh -huh. come in to shop at Flax. Yep. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about this. I didn't know she was an artist. She, um, actually, she, she is an artist, or I don't know if she still practices her art, but um, she came in when, oh, I, I think probably in the early 80s. She was doing a lot of seagulls. She had a home down in um, Pajaro Dunes, and we had a conversation about that because that was a, an area that we went to as kids on vacation a lot. Right, so people, artists of all stripes come into Flax. I mean, tell us about some of the famous people or memorable people that have come into store to buy art supplies. Well, Tracy Chapman is one. She comes in a lot. Yeah. Still? Yes, yeah, uh -huh. regularly. Uh, Joe Montana and his wife came in recently. Yes, <laughs> 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 yeah, been swooned, right? Yeah, we, yeah. we did. Yeah. Um, Danny Glover comes in. Willie Brown has come in. Art Agnos loved, loves the store. Right. Yeah. And, and I also understand there's a little bit of Hollywood history that Kim Novak came in. Now, I, I want to hear the whole story because I've heard different versions about it, that she came in during the filming of Hitchcock's Vertigo. What's the story? Well, it's been decades, so every telling of the story is going to be uh, somewhat different. And better. Uh, and, and better, <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Um, but my remembrance of it from my father telling it uh, a, n a number of different times is that the filming took place in, in the back of the store, and during a break in the filming, Kim Novak uh, came into the store, and my father had an opportunity or uh, a chance encounter where their two hands brushed each other. And when he came home, he came home that, that evening and spoke to my mother about what happened. And he did not want to take a shower or wash his hands. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. Flax is part of a little bit of Hollywood movie history, kind of a. Right. And yeah. she purchased everything purple, purple pencil, purple paper. That was purple was dedicated to Kim Novak. How interesting! Yeah. How interesting. Now a lot of people. That was when Flax was in downtown San Francisco. Mm -hmm. right. When did Flax make the move to the Market Street location at Market Street in Valencia? We acquired that location in 1977 and didn't make the official move to that location being our primary destination until I think it was 82. Mm -hmm. We had the Sutter Street location and Market Street for a period of time. Right. Now there's something special about your logo as well, the, the, the F, uh -huh. the iconic uh, Flax logo. It's, uh, it's part of a permanent museum collection, correct? It, it's it is. in the yeah. permanent collection of MoMA. In New York City? In New York City, yeah. yes. And, and that was not a piece of information that was available to us until about a year and a half ago when I found mention of it in an old industry trade magazine. And it turns out that uh, my father's cousin Harvey uh, commissioned a, a young uh, uh, graphic artist to uh, create the logo. And uh, at the time, uh, uh, Best Test Glue uh, was, it became a, a very uh, popular adhesive, mm -hmm. uh, but prior to that, the logo was used to uh, to be applied to this glue that, that, that Harvey was selling. Huh. 
So now it is considered kind of an iconic bit of commercial design. And so this would have been kind of the period of like Mad Men. I mean, this was a big campaign, the yeah. F for right. Flax, correct? Yeah. Now this year you've had another artist create a, uh, an F freestanding. I've seen it all around town, like four feet. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been traveling around town kind of like Where's Waldo? I it's mean, yeah. 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 it's popped up in Chinatown at the Chinese Historical Society. Fisherman's Wharf. Fisherman's Wharf mm -hmm. at Ghirardelli Square. It's yeah. been at the uh, San Francisco National Dragon Boat Festival. Right. And I understand it's going to be downtown coming up someplace soon. At the Mint, yes. We'll be at the Mint. Um, and then we'll also be at the Center for the Book this coming weekend. Great. So the, the F is making it around town. It's traveling. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, you know, I, I said that uh, I decorated my wedding with Alfredo at, at Flax before I, I knew it, uh, knew you all. And I have seen since then a lot of people just express, you don't hear this very often about a store, an affection for Flax. Uh, a friend of mine went in with a 20-year-old pen to look for a cartridge, and he didn't know that uh, you know I was going to have you on the show. And he he went on for 20 minutes about how your staff, even though they didn't have the cartridge, found the right cartridge for him. How do you found how do you find staff like this in 2013 that are this loyal and dedicated to customer service? Um, I think that a lot of it is our a lot of our staff are artists, and I think they understand that um, being able to, to provide the best service is is what we're all about. Mm -hmm. um, we actually just celebrated one of our staff, uh, somebody on our staff. We just celebrated his 40th anniversary at the store this week, and I think that it's something that we pride ourselves on is to go the extra mile for the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of competition out there. You want to stand out. Well, I mean, let's talk about that. There's a lot of competition. How have you made it through several? recessions and, and a depression, and you're still a family-owned business. That's, that's kind of strange. Yeah, well, um, any retail business has to focus on service selection and price. Uh, generally, the combination of those three in one fashion or another. Our prices are very fair. However, we primarily um, uh, focus on service and selection. And when customers come into the store, that is the experiential components uh, th those are the components that, th that they uh, uh, come away with. Mm -hmm. Now, you all grew up in the store. Yes. What kind of childhood was that? Um, it was, well, for us it was normal. That's what uh -huh. we did. Every vacation we worked at the store. Um, I think my first memory of, of my first job was stamping the San Francisco stamp on our, on our catalogs that we shared with our cousins around the country um, for a quarter a day. <laughs> <laughs> And how about you? Any, any childhood memories of growing up around this place? I can't believe that she remembers that. <laughs> um, um, my earliest childhood memories working for the store would be in Sutter Street counting paper. Mm -hmm. There were just endless flat files of paper that needed to be inventory. There were no computers back then. Yeah. One of the things that I find most interesting about Flax, and I've talked to a number of artists and customers before this interview who I said have real affection for the store, is in an age when everything seems to be going electronic and digital and tablets, and even artists are creating art digitally, mm -hmm. Flax hasn't just survived, you've thrived. I mean, this is a, this is a high touch, not high tech business. How has the internet age affected what you do, or has it? Uh, I think it's affected the entire art supply industry in, in terms of, of pricing, and that's not exclusive to our industry. I think mm -hmm. every, un, every industry um, is, has been subjected to that uh, because of the, the ease of any business uh, getting online. Uh, but for us, it comes back to those components I was talking about before, service and selection. You can't replicate that in the online environment. Mm -hmm. And the types of products that we sell with the, the color and the texture, the, the tactile component, uh, can only be experienced in a one-on-one -on -one retail type of environment, right. and that's what we continue to foster. In our last few seconds, tell us your favorite thing about working at Flax. Uh, inspiration. I'm inspired every day by the amount of uh, artists that are around us, and I think it's a thrill to meet people who come into San Francisco and have never yet been to the store. Well, great. Well, hopefully a lot more people will be coming in. We'll be back another 75 years. I've been speaking with brother and sister team, Howard and Leslie Flax owners and operators of Flax, the candy store for the creative. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.